Good morning, I've got my super server cluster set to Pacific time because I'm getting on a plane in just a few hours to head to Vegas for VMworld 2017. Now I know not everyone can be there and I'm only presenting for three hours. So this video is intended to help you out. Should you come by my booth and see something that was interesting and want to learn more, well, this video will help you. Or if you weren't able to attend at all uh, and you just want to have a glimpse at what this super server cluster looks like in action, this will do it as well. And this is the physical rig I'm bringing. This set of stuff is what I'm flying with. And just point out a few things here. These are 10 gig cables, these blue ones. I've replaced them with a green because green is the color of the LED on the back. Let me uh, show you a little picture of that. So from a physical perspective, we'll start with that. And there we go. I've got this picture giving a preview that Hey, I've got a label here now, and green means 10 gig, and a green cable showing that. I kind of like that. This carbon fiber look is just a sticker, so let me point that out. I have a bundle, or a build of materials, and a black carbon fiber roll. Everything in the picture is laid out for you. Now, there is one thing that is glowing on the right there, and that's Intel Optane. Yes. I'm bringing one of the first samples in the world, an engineering sample of Intel Optane that'll be hanging out in the PCIe slot of the system and actually running and booted. All right, so that's a physical look at what's going to be with me. Now let's have a look at what I plan to demo. Someone stops by for somewhere like two to five minutes in small groups. There's not a whole lot you can show. It tends to be mostly the physical, but if people do want to click on the software, I am most definitely ready. And let me give you a demo of that. Now, if we just start up Chrome, right, left to right, a whole bunch of different pieces of my uh, infrastructure that I'm traveling with. There's a bunch of shortcuts here, but I've made these taskbar shortcuts that are even handier and makes it a lot easier to see uh, what's going on and which app is running. It's really a, a tab in Chrome, but it looks like apps. How did I do that? Well, I have an article about it, but why don't I just show you here? It uh, looks like I skipped a tab, like Empower Pro Outlets. I want to show the Power Outlet strip. And I save passwords where possible for a kiosk-like situation or a public lab situation where it's uh, handy to just be able to talk and click rather than typing in passwords a lot. So we click on the three little buttons. It used to be a hamburger menu. Click on More Tools, Add to Desktop. And that's it. So now, right click on this, pin to taskbar, and right click on that and delete it. Okay, I'm gonna slide it over in the same sequence I had it. Let's see, where was that? Uh, way over to the left. Right next to there. All right, so now I'm gonna launch it that way. Power Outlet Control will show like this. I will have to authenticate, but I'll just leave that running. And now it's very obvious to bring that up. Suppose I wanted to run maximized. If I maximize it, then close it, it should save that window size preference. So I'm now in good shape with that particular window and all the others. So let me continue the tour working my way left to right. Uh, there's one I skipped here and that is the router itself. Okay, so this router is going with me and the interface for it. I have a video covering the firmware upgrade and the configuration, but yes, this is the router I'm traveling with. It's got DHCP duties. Uh, it's doing DNS for reverse lookup, fully qualified name or not. All that is working. So that's the router, working our way left to right again. Next, Supermicro and IPMI. What is that? That's this interface, the out-of-band management. Let me drive that point home for you. I left this browser ready. There's that tweet, that picture of the back. And there you go. We're over here on the left uh, Ethernet interface. 
and it's a one gig speed port. You can mount ISOs, install operating systems, all that good stuff. You don't need to use the VGA connector for anything really. So that's the IPMI port. So I basically pointed my browser to the IP address that shows if you hook up a monitor to VGA when you first power it on, it tells you what IP address it has. So yeah, I've got that going. And if someone wants to see it, uh, I can even in open the Java app. Oop, don't have Java installed, don't really need it. I can just go with IKVM. And there you go. For spacebar, it turns yellow. And preferences, crank up the image quality. All right, so that's IPMI. Whole lot of stuff you can do there, including show people the temperatures with the lid off that the thing is running pretty cool, even if I put it under some stress. Okay, continuing along. I have an appliance installed. So this appliance is vRealize Log Insight. Uh, I was using it for syslogging and have not gotten an article out about that yet. I have a draft, but I don't have that out yet. So that's just one of my many VMs. Let me move along. This is the Welcome to vSphere page. So if people are wondering what's an Adobe Flash uh, version, web client that's getting deprecated, that was announced yesterday. And then what's in the HTML5 version? So the deprecation is announced yesterday that the next major release of VMware vSphere uh, will no longer have web client. The next release will be the last version with web client at all. All right, continuing. If you hover the mouse over and just wait, it says what it is. VMware application management, VAMI. That was a little weird how it painted the screen and then asked for authentication. Huh, okay, something a little odd was going on there with authentication, but we're good now. And if I have internet, for instance, I can show people how easy it is to keep this appliance now up to date. It's that easy. Cool. This is host client. This is pointing my browser straight to the ESXi host and logging in. Looks like that was run in a small window. So I'm going to fix that now since I'm about to shut down and want to just power this up and be ready when the time comes for my demo. So it's logging right back in because Chrome is already running, right? It didn't ask me for authentication. And uh, we can leave auto refresh on. So this shows performance and all that good stuff. That's the usual look at what's going on. Some things are broken because I pulled out some hard drives for travel that had data on it that I care about. All right, next, vSphere web client. Also a small window, let me fix that. So vSphere web client logs in, administrator at local. Let's see what it says when I have my mouse over it. It says vSphere web client, simply enough. So I think now you're seeing that your personal browsing being separated out from all these other handy icons is an extremely useful thing. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. And having a bunch of, having a single Chrome icon that has a bunch of tabs on it, uh, you know, just gets tricky real fast. Because you can't easily see what each tab is doing. So I love having this separated approach. Uh, now vSphere Web Client, as you know, is slower to log in. We've got our hosts and clusters, and the data center is about to get broken. So when I travel, the cluster is gonna have two members that are not coming along for the ride. They're just gonna show with a red X disconnected. Oh well, uh, the ZND1541 is going on the plane with me. All right, here we go. HTML5 client, also now known as vSphere client. Very simple name to remember. I'm so glad they went with that name. Uh, they actually asked the experts and others to vote on a name for this vSphere client. So simple and short, people might actually say it properly. Love that. And there it is. That's ready too, to show off to people that stop by. If we look at uh, VMs and templates, I neatened up a little bit with some folders, making sure I'm covered. So if someone deletes a VM that I'm using or the VM that we're running right now, then recording this demo in is Win10 VMworld 2017 US. All right. It's actually its DNS name. The router takes care of that. Awesome. All I had to do is name it in Windows. Now Linux or Putty Sessions or anything can see that DNS name. So 
Did we finish all the icons? Ah, there is one more. It's not a Chrome browser, though. It's actually a full-blown app. And I already have it running. It's called SolarWinds. So if you haven't used this already, it still works. All right, under Control Panel, <laughs> somewhere, is the old school programs. And it's under Windows Features. Okay, so I turned on .NET Framework 3.5. I turned that checkbox on. I didn't open the plus, so I didn't let those alone. Just click this, clicked OK. It quickly installed .NET 3.5, and then suddenly old SolarWinds via monitor still fired right up and works great. And you have a nice at-a-glance view of the VMs that are running. So it looks like I missed one. Time to clean that up. What did I miss? What could that be? Uh, it's this VM right here, PowerPoint Business ed Edition. So I'm going to make an icon for that. Uh, does that have a DNS name? It looks like the answer is no. So 118, let me fix that up. So I'm going to go over my router, go to services, view leases, filter for dot 118. I have a clone of this home router going with me, by the way. So it'll only have Oh, whatever. I have two of these routers. One that stays at home for all routing uh, in my home, along with Eero for Wi-Fi. And then another one that's a clone of the config. So when I travel, my little piece of a cluster, my server, doesn't notice it's left home. Hopefully that made some sense. So I'm going to map a static IP, and I'm going to give this thing a name. Like, how about the name of... Uh, it's an ugly name, but... All right, that's the name of the VM by default. It's an appliance you download from CyberPower to make their UPS work nicely. Okay, so that's saving. We should be fine. Now, let me show you that device. Um, I still have a personal browser. There we go. I have a copy of Chrome open. And remember I told you that this little cluster is going with me? Well, the CyberPower is over here on the right. It has a USB cable attached to the server. And there's a VM I leave running, so it monitors if we lose power, this cluster gets shut down. ESXi, basically the battery, has a, a web server that is running as a VM in the ESXi host. USB is attached to it, attached to that one VM. And it signals when power is lost, and that VM will log into ESXi itself and gracefully shut down. And if you've told your cluster to what to do when you in the event of losing power, well, all that should handle, uh, it should handle shutting down all the VMs as well. And why don't I just show you that? So if we look at this little guy and click on monitor. Oh yeah, hardware health I didn't cover here. There you go. Watts, RPMs, and all that good stuff shown. Um, shut down. So under configuration, Let's see, I'll just go to web client, configure, VM startup shutdown, VCSA appliance, and the VM that monitors the UPS. Those are both set to auto start, and guest shutdown is a default behavior I set, rather than the ridiculous default that's power off. It basically forcibly powers things off, which is nasty. Okay, so uh, NTP is set, by the way, cool. All right, why am I not seeing um, that? Because I didn't click on configure, VM startup, shutdown, and there it is, same stuff right there. So that's it. That's all I really wanted to show you on my vSphere cluster, and that I hope you can come by and ask me more about. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, comments, uh, they're always greatly appreciated on my website. Even beyond a bookmark, we can make a handy-dandy shortcut. And go to do more tool, add to desktop, turn on open as window, and pin to taskbar, and delete this. Now I've got a handy dandy shortcut that just brings up the browser with no URL bar or anything else cluttering, wasting space. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and for visiting tinkerdry.com.